Hey guys, welcome to the Apex Social Podcast. I'm Rose and I'm here with Maren. Hello, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. So yeah. Rosie, can I call you Rosie? You yes, pronoun. of course, of course. Okay, okay. So Rosie and I, we know each other because we lived for 10 months together during COVID. Yes. I joined your family as a care professional in 2021 and yes. I no in 2020 in 2020 and oh I my joined gosh, you was so long ago During yeah COVID. yes I can remember I arrived in Boston in summer we spent a whole summer together camping because of co- corona that was and so then fun. we had the best time of our winter and spring yes. And oh because gosh, of Corona, yeah. we spent like literally every day, every day, every together. day together. Yeah, it was so fun. Rose is the reason why I actually started podcasting. Yeah, so I started a podcast called Rose Convos in the beginning of COVID just as a fun little like passion project, I guess. I don't know. And I just talked about all these random topics that I felt like talking about and I sent them out to my family so they could hear about how I was doing during the pandemic Mm -hmm. that was like my little like I guess my side little thing that I was doing and then what did you do Maren what did I do I started a podcast project about well-being and it's called Atlas 62 it's in German and I just got so inspired by you I was like okay yes I have so much knowledge about positive psychology I want to put out there and maybe inspire more people and I created 62 episodes to get up with a good mood in the morning and do something for yourself and self-care it came all together to a round circle I'm so grateful to know you and to know your family and to just like have such a good experience and memories looking back now we also learned a lot about each other today we're gonna talk about the do's and the don'ts and how to start how to have a good start in the house family from the care professional sides and what a care professional can do and what they should not do and then from the family's perspective what the family can do and maybe what they should not do but before we start I want to tell let's do a little game All right. let's, can you tell something funny or something silly about me and I'm gonna tell something about you just to introduce each other to our guests okay so Maren here she is a very very funny person she loves loves to explore on her free time or she loved to explore her free time while she worked with us she Mm -hmm. would always go and travel somewhere new she would book hotels in random places at the last minute just so that she could go and do something fun with her free time because she you would never find her like sitting in her room during her free time just like watching netflix no if she was watching netflix it was in a random hotel in a place somewhere more interesting (laughs) She is definitely someone that you will always find doing something. I don't know. Could never sit <laughs> still, especially on her free time. <laughs> yeah. Even when we were together, we would always be doing something. Like, every time we hung out, we would go on adventures. So, Marn is a very adventurous person. You're so right, but you make it seem like I was fleeing. <laughs> I kind of no don't get us wrong here I just needed my time for myself she just wanted to explore the new places that she was yes and I just wanted to explore new places exactly and I feel like this is something so many care professionals have because of course we're coming here to the U.S. to work in a professional environment and do our best and support and other, on the other side, when you're in a new place, you want to see the new place. So this is definitely what yep. I did. And it was so good because we went, can you remember the water spot in Boston we went? Oh, yeah, picnics? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I took you for a hike and Coach, yes. you didn't like it at all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I remember that. But he got, like, he got up. 
he, he did a through. great job he yeah. powered through yeah he definitely did yeah and I feel like my silliness created a lot of memories for all of us kind yes, of definitely <laughs> a lot of memories yeah so something fun about you um Rose is such a creative person and she has like you have a lot of different ways how to explain and show yourself yeah I can remember there was a time you did a lot of ASMR right a ASMR yeah yeah and this was one way um you love to play with this and uh yeah I totally forgot about that that's so funny <laughs> Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, and I also remember you love baking and cooking, but never cleaning. <laughs> yep, that's very true. That's completely still accurate information. Yeah, who is cleaning now when I'm not there? Mm, my parents clean, but also if Abra's over, she'll clean. That's one of my best friends, mm -hmm. or my best friend actually. Yes, she's your best friend, and she was like we spent a lot of time with Abra. Say hi. Hi, April. Yeah, hi, Abra. We're going to send this to her. <laughs> yeah. I would say let's just start. Yeah. Do's and don'ts. Let's start with the do's. What should a cat professional do, Rosie? What should a cat professional do to have a good start in a family? Okay. So I think... One of the main things for me is to come with an open mind and, like, an open personality. Because, like, to gain a really good relationship with the family, the host family, you're going to want to be very open to trying new things. You're going to not want to let little difficulties or small little mistakes or whatever ruin your full-on mindset with this family. Even if it's just, a, if you're having a bad day, don't let that, like, stop your, stop your mindset from being completely ruined. Like, that's just mm -hmm. a main thing. Be open to trying new things. If the family is doing something that you're uncomfortable with, talk to them about it. But also, it's okay to, like, maybe take that step outside your comfort zone and show the family that you can handle new things even if it's hard and show them that you're flexible and mm -hmm. really like I guess just show the family that you're willing to really like work with them you can work with them properly you're willing to take provide really good care and take risks when necessary things like that yeah do you have an example for that especially for like how how can I as someone who never lived in a culture um in a like because the care professional is coming here from a different culture and two cultures are meeting yeah. right so how can a care professional show a family that they appreciate their family culture okay let's see one thing that you can do to really involve yourself in the family culture is by sharing meals with them because This is just a really great time to bond and become part of the family, part of the family culture. And that way that you can talk about your days and what you thought went well and also just connecting over things that I guess just you don't talk about just like throughout the day. Just like talk about how things went. Also just talking about having fun, laughing together, things mm -hmm. like that. Just Being all together is a really, really important thing in communicating. It just yeah. shows that you're really like, you're really like dedicated and you want to know how things yeah. are going. And it's just, I don't know. I thought that that really was a useful thing when we yeah. were together. Totally. I can remember the moment because there will be the moment you can start choking around. And if you can yeah. make your first jokes, you are you're on a great way to learn the language i feel like joking around in the dinner table made me always feel comfortable and a part of something and of the family yeah yeah i i totally agree with that i feel like it's just when you get to the point where you're no longer completely strangers that's when you can really start to enjoy yourself and stuff like it's not doesn't feel 
as much like you're working for them it's more like you're working with them Mm -hmm. I don't know I think it's just a great thing yeah and this is definitely what we want to create working together on the goals and on supporting and empowerment yeah for the family yes Mm -hmm. this is good I have the same note from my side what should do a family to um, prepare a good start um, meals together I always felt so appreciated when we had meals while my working time so I was still on my working time and we had meals together and after the meal after the dinner I cleaned up the table and maybe your parents went outside with your brother yeah or I went outside with your brother and we went for a walk and they cleaned up the table so it was more like um oh for me as a care professional it felt very welcoming and seeing that my working time is also in daily activities right we do something like a daily routine activity and it's still my working time because this is part of my job as a care professional to be there at home and to support the child at home yeah. and dinner is definitely a part of this i know not everyone can handle their working their working time and their schedule like this but if it's possible i feel like this is very nice to yeah. have and if the care professional is off while the family has dinner time i always loved when I uh, got asked like hey Marin what is your plan for tonight do you want to have dinner with us or do are you going out so like yeah. still be included that's definitely definitely something that we should be doing another thing that I think that a care professional should do for like a good start in the relationship is to spend time finding common interests with the family and like with the kids um because it's like it's good because then you can bond over certain things and even plan like possible activities around them to like like further your connection and like your bond so that Mm -hmm. it feels less it feels less awkward it feels more natural like your bond it doesn't feel like you're just like you're just watching them it feels like you're kind of both enjoying your your time even if you're not enjoying it at least (laughs) at least you know fake it till you make it yeah take it till you you make it it. exactly I mean sometimes I'll be honest sometimes it's hard sometimes we it's sometimes it's not fun on one end sometimes it's not fun on the other end but it's always good to find good common interests it's like from my perspective as a host child I, like, formed really strong bonds around certain things. Like, I've had many, many au pairs. But, you know, like, for example, Marn and I really liked doing our makeup for fun. So one night we hung out and did our makeup and watched, like, a fun movie together. Yeah. Um, You did my wing perfectly on my eyes. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. I did a really perfect wing eyeliner. But then on the other eye, I completely, like, failed. But, you know... (laughs) I just remember, like, completely giving up and just making it horrible <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some really funny pictures of that night. Yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of different things. Yeah. Let's say a care professional comes in a family and the family never had someone living with them in the house. Yeah. What would you, what would be your advice to create a Good bond? bond. Yeah, but the start, like how to start it. Okay. Always asking questions is good. Kind of like finding their hobbies and just expressing interest in like what they're doing. Okay, this is another fake it till you make it moment. Even if you're not interested in what they're doing, show interest. Find ways that you can connect with them like that and things like that. Like show, dedicating your time and energy to just taking like to just take like to just trying to like find things that you guys can do together or even just things to talk about things like that things yeah I don't know yeah just trying to think of another thing (laughs) no it's good yeah I remember um 
at the beginning, right in my on my second day, we worked on a on a vision board together. Oh, for right. yeah, for your room because you renovated your room, your whole room yeah. got a makeover, and I remember we worked on this together on a vision board and. While you were vision boarding, I asked you a lot of questions. Oh, what is your favorite color? What do you think about this? What is like yeah. um, your opinion on this and this and stuff like this? So it's, I yeah. feel like you're right. Like just spending time together. Yeah. yeah. It's the more you spend time together, the more you create a bond. I feel like another important thing is even if like you're not together all the time, even if you have busy lives, just finding time to like check in on each other like I sometimes have long days and I don't get home until late and sometimes you're working with um Koji really late and you haven't seen me all day even this is kind of a stretch even if it's if even if I'm coming home late just checking in maybe you're off your maybe you're off and you have free time now and you're not working right now just mm -hmm. like saying hi checking in and sh like I don't know, showing gratitude and I just, I don't know. Yeah. Staying connected, things like that. Yes, exactly. Because also when you're off your time, of course, there are certain things. If you're off your time, you can leave the dishes in the sink. Yes, yeah. you can. But I did this a couple of times. But also human connections and being there and being a part of the family is not a job it's not it's yeah. not your job but it is who you are and who you are you are around with and you want to yeah be appreciated and you should give the same back to the family exactly for sure think so of it's it, not yeah think of it's it like, like your private life exactly like if right. you were staying at like a guest house and you were I don't know, if you saw, like, something that needed cleaning up, sometimes, sometimes you just don't have the time, but if you want, like, it's a good thing to do, and it's also just, like, a way of showing that you care, I guess. Yes. And yes. showing the family that you are willing to do these things for them. Yes. Even very true. Hard. And very important, and I feel like, um, care professionals. Yeah. It's like this, it, there's like a line between work and private. And this line is very thin for everyone, for the family and for the care professionals. You are living together, right? And yeah. the whole family is opening their house and their arms for you. And so you should like open your arms and your eyes as well. And your arm. Um, yeah, just no, taking I totally agree taking care of the surrounding also when you're not working doesn't mean like that you have to clean up the dishes every night but yeah like, no. if you see the trash is full and you walk outside just take the trash it's nice yes. of you it's so nice just be a nice person you wanted other people are nice to you so be nice to everyone else right yeah behave like a normal human should just because you're off your time doesn't mean that you're like not part of the family you know yes And this is like something, I think this is the biggest struggle for everyone because on the other hand, every human being needs time for themselves and yeah. like me time. And let's talk about the me time thing because this is the yeah. reason also why I like, I booked a hotel randomly in nowhere and just drove away for yeah. a night to, or a day to explore yeah. and to have some me time and the family needs the same right yeah, and the no, kids need the same everyone I needs totally to agree time. giving space is a really big thing so you guys are living together it's like it's not like you guys are siblings it's not the same because you haven't known each other for that long it's not like a complete sibling relationship like you're not behaving like you would with a sibling but at the same time it's kind of like you're gaining another family member in a set kind of way um so that's that means like If someone might have had a hard day, you need to really acknowledge that and maybe give them space or check in on them like a family member would do. Things like that. Yeah. But also, 
just acknowledging when it's time to give space and when it's time to like talk I guess just like finding the balance because I don't know sometimes yeah people just want to be alone and that's the way it is and that's okay yes exactly don't be ashamed for your own feelings and just like figure out how to how to handle your own feelings and then communicate them in a nice understanding way yeah and I feel like if you are a good example for communication you make it easy for other people to communicate yeah back to you communication Um, is super important yeah let's go over to because you just built it up a perfect bridge to the topic of communication and this is something I have on my to what a host family should do yeah plan ahead a schedule Mm -hmm. and meeting times and yes. I remember I did this with your mom once a week and we we sat down and talked for an hour about the kids, about school, about family, about therapy, about my feelings, about her feelings, about everything, was what was going on. And yeah. that, I mean, it was COVID and I know everyone is so busy and most people don't have time. But this is a perfect example. It doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It can be like 15 minutes or 20 minutes or no time, like um, no scheduled time. But it ne- needs to be a known time where the family member, a family member, and the care professional can sit down and have a safe, space talk and what I mean with a safe space talk is a talk on the table not between the doors sitting down drinking a glass of water having a coffee eat a cookie and talk about hey what is going on reflecting reflecting and setting up goals planning ahead so the care professional gets a schedule for best the next four weeks I know sometimes you have to be flexible schedule can change but like like at least set up the off times set up the off weekends and stuff like this set up maybe a date night for the parents you know stuff like stuff like this just plan ahead and give yourself and the care professional this space to talk about and reflecting Um, yeah and because you said it earlier very well rose we are all living together in a house and also if it's a big house it's the the shared space and let's try to create in the shared space a safe talking time you can bring everything on the on the table and have a nice communication yeah and then you can go you can go in in your areas again and go back to work yeah yeah and just like this topic is out of the world after this talk kind of or you know how to how to do it so this is like one of the things i learned most um communication needs space yeah that's really i yeah i just think that's like one of the most important parts communication communicate your emotions if you're uncomfortable that's something to prioritize if you're part of the family and there's something not working for you just say it otherwise you're going to go on being miserable you know maybe not miserable but uncomfortable just go out and fix it i mean it may feel a little bit weird but it's the right thing to do in things like this. And it'll create like a safe, fun and like healthy living environment. I yeah. Suppose. Yes. And if you have like, if you have a weekly meeting with the care professional and the family member and another tip, we recorded our meeting and send it to your dad. So both yeah. um, parts of parents have yeah. the same, get the same information. Yeah. Mm, then you don't have to carry your feelings or your worries with you because you know okay monday morning at nine the kids are in the school i'm gonna sit down with i'm gonna sit down with the parents and talk about everything yeah great 
exactly it, it works really well it's a perfect tactic it can be adjusted it doesn't mean that it has to we can work around like if there's something happening that day at that time it's okay we can reschedule just get that time in to talk yes don't get like don't get lazy on this time and say like oh this week i don't have anything to talk about it's yeah. fine but please don't cancel it because if something is coming up one day and you don't have this safe space communication time then uh, it seems like oh no we have to talk because there's a bad topic coming up yeah and you don't want to make this like a bad you don't want to label it like something bad you want to label it like you don't want to label it but you want to put it out as something positive like a coffee talk and yeah sitting and planning your week yeah so what else do we have on our what to do to have a great start um okay let's see okay this is on what the family should do for a good start i think that personally it's good to let the caregiver know your kids before completely giving them full like responsibility and leaving them alone with the kids just because they've never met your kids before this and the kids have never met them and you want to make sure that they're comfortable with each other. Um, you have to like hear both sides, see how the kids feel, see how the caregiver feels and just give it time to adjust. This is not a vi this is not something that happens overnight. It's not like one day you're strangers and then the next you're best friends. It doesn't need to be rushed. I think that, like, no matter what, it's better to take it slow than dive into something that, like, you're not ready for. However, that does not mean that it has to take an entire year to, like, leave them alone with the kids. Like, it should be something that happens eventually. But just be aware of, like, everyone's comfort zone, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. Yeah, I have another thing what I appreciated. I got asked, hey, Marin, how was your night and how are your pillows? Do you need a different pillow? Yeah, just like small I felt acts of kindness. So, yeah, I felt so nice. I felt so like, oh, they're really taking care of me. <laughs> yeah. I love them. Yeah. Do you have something else? Or should we try dive in in the no notes? Um, I guess one more thing. This is in like so, this is just a standard thing that everyone should have in their life. But make sure that they have they have their own space. The caregiver has their own space. Like not only physically but like mentally, give them space if they need time by themselves on their off time. Don't bother them unless it's um like not an emergency but unless it's important give them time and also physical space let them have their own I mean it's very important that care professionals just have their own space and that they have space mentally because it's a big transition for them and they just need time to get used to this new unusual space especially in the first few months and you know just Let them have that safe, safe like place to just be by themselves and not in this group setting. Like even just myself as the host, host family or part of the host family, I need my own time. It's just a normal human need, and it's just something that needs to be acknowledged sometimes because it seems like sometimes the caregivers are working for them, so. It's like they have to be just always doing, doing, doing things. But no, they need they need their own time. I mean, that's just as simple as it is. I love that you put this out. This is perfect. Rose, I also um, have something in my mind. I want to address quickly. Yes. Because working in social work and working always with people together is it is like it's like 
your body needs a different source of energy. Yeah. So working with people can be very, very energy taking. Yeah, draining. And yeah. yeah, keep this keep this all in mind. This is a serious job. This is a very, very important empowermental serious great loving job but it's for sure a job yeah yeah so give them give them a little smile in the evening and say thank you also for the job i mean yeah you it's hard work. if someone if some someone comes to you and says like hey thanks for taking care of this or thanks for organizing this meeting today you feel so appreciated Let's go to the do not, the no-nos. Yes, the no-nos of a good start. I guess I'll start with one kind of big one. Don't, just do not, if you're having romantic relations outside of the, in your outside life, outside of the home life with the host family, just do not bring them home. Don't bring that into your relationship. It overcomplicates things. Then they have to consider. They have to consider. I don't know how to how they like them. If they don't like your partner, that just creates conflict. And this the same goes for um, friends, but that's definitely a whole different category because, especially if there are other um, friends that are also caregivers then you your the their kids can also hang out with your kids it's like that can be a really good way of bonding but just romantic relationships big no no to bring into the family life yes and if you we don't say you should not date we just say like be very yeah. aware of the feelings of other people yes. in the family because you're part of the family and you're also in a role of a guest and you don't bring your tinder date at yeah. night or after the club you don't bring someone home no yeah, exactly <laughs> no no yeah yeah okay do you have one i have one okay a big no no from let's start with the care professional yeah a big no no as a care professional is to leave a kid especially a child with special needs alone in the car doesn't matter if it's 10 seconds or an hour big no no never yes. never leave the kids by themselves yeah. never <laughs> especially never. not in a rolling vehicle make sure the kids are safe yeah it depends on the kids level of like development um, the development but also like just leaving them alone in general like if they're like at home that's one thing but like if you're in a public setting and they are incapable of like su like standing up for themselves in like yeah it's like in difficult si situations it's just better yeah. to play it safe yeah and just Bobby. be with them because you do not want to be making that mistake and end up somewhere sticky i don't know just yeah in general and it's It'll make Sorry. them feel safer, and you'll definitely feel safer. So just find a way to make it work. <laughs> yes. And don't think you can get a coffee while the kid is waiting in the car. No. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. You don't yeah. know how many things can happen in a minute. Yeah. Remember, and you don't want to be the person in this situation who yeah, needs exactly. to go home and explain what's going on right now. Exactly. So You're the one working. You're the one getting... You're the one getting paid for doing this, right? You're working. This yeah. is not your time to be, like, doing things that could put the kids in potential danger, I guess. Yeah. Like, And I know everyone is trained so well, but it's just like a, a no-no we have to address. I know everyone outside there will agree with us on this yeah. topic, but let's just play it safe and address it here. Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Um, okay, I have one. So, if this is kind of something that is not as talked about, but I guess just bonds with kids that the parents are unaware of, like, 
telling keeping secrets between you and the kid like for example this is just a very like small example that's not as that's a very minor example that won't generally do harm for anyone but for example you're letting the kid stay up past their bedtime and you tell the kid um don't tell your parents i'm letting you stay up um blah 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 don't get me in trouble things like that that's just something that you should steer clear of because that's you want everyone to be open you want the parents to be aware of things like that just tell them like oh blah, your kid stayed up a few minutes late um so if they're a little tired tomorrow that's probably why and just like staying in open relationships just don't hide things from the parents in general and if you're doing something secretive with the kid that's not good I mean okay there is there is a little there's a fine line of where keeping secrets are okay such as like making Christmas gifts together like that's a great bonding thing (laughs) yeah (laughs) me and Marn we have definitely made like secrets like that like that are okay and they're not like there aren't bad things it's just doing nice things for other people like making Christmas gifts like I was saying things like that but Mm -hmm. just don't have secretive things unless it's like unless it applies correctly yeah because if you have a secret like this the parents will notice earlier or later and the kids they notice also that the child the kids are not telling them what's going on and probably as a parent you assume worse yeah, and you'll also just lose a trust, I guess. Exactly. Once you find out anyways. Yeah. I'm um, talking about trust. Yes. I have something that I feel like it's very important to address here because of cultural difference and the way how people in Europe and especially the area of Germany, Austria are living. Um, because in Europe, we don't use cameras in the house and especially if you're living in a wealthy area in the u.s and the u.s is so much more improved with technology i feel like 99 percent of the families working with apex socials have in-house cameras or at least outside cameras and i feel like this is something that a lot of care professionals get confused with because they come to the US and we just don't know the situation of getting yeah. filmed in the house. And I feel like just to provide a good and trusted relationship from the beginning, just tell you the care professionals when they walk in the house, hey, look, there's a camera. We have the camera to make sure our kids are safe. And yeah. ex- ex- quickly explain why you have cameras and i feel like this would make everything easier and more understandable and it's not that that people from europe charge americans for that it's just a cultural difference and something we don't know (laughs) so it's simply just like a safety precaution that is never okay i'm not gonna say never there of course are situations where it could be different but it's not to like spy on on care professional or anything or like watch them while they're working like that is something for a um host parent or for the host family to just never really be watching unless it's necessary I mean of course there are other situations but just it's it's not it's not I wouldn't worry about it being used as like you shouldn't feel under pressure in the household because you're being watched I guess I don't know Exactly. And if you feel under pressure, just notice that it's not against you and it's not because of you and the family had cameras before you arrived and they have the camera for different reasons yeah. and not because they want to spy on you. If you give the care professional a phone and your location um, is on like find my friends on iPhone, let the care professional know that, hey, we have you the location on on your work phone just to make sure you're all the time safe. I wanna tell you this so yeah. you don't feel like we're gonna spy on you. And if the care professional tells you, okay, I feel very uncomfortable with 
Then Maybe it's, it's because of a it's, it's because of the cultural difference and not because yeah it's something new it's it's new yeah. for so many people um coming from Europe to the US and it's not that a care professional wants to hide anything if they put this off and it's not that a family wants to spy on the care professional and control them no it's a safety it's something it's, they yeah. do for safe for safety to provide safety yeah exactly. i feel like this is like certain little topics i feel it's very important to talk about yeah and this could be something you can address with the beginning or maybe also before the talk but if you're listening to this and you haven't addressed it yet maybe have a talk <laughs> yeah it's just like different styles of different families safety. different things you know yeah yeah that's great i just remembered something i did in the mm -hmm. family in california and i know they loved it for example when i spent a long day with the with the kid i took care of yeah i took pictures with the phone and i sent them to our group chat and told the family what was going on today. And for yeah. example, also meal plans. And I yeah. prepared the meals and everything. And I always tried to have as open communication as I could. And yeah. it, took, it took a while to get to the state to feel like, okay, I'm comfortable with communication and I'm comfortable with right. the translation from German to English. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's it takes time. And maybe we can close this podcast with remembering that everything takes time and it's a growing yeah. process. It's okay to take the time. You never need to, don't feel like you need to rush into things. And if you do, that's something, once again, communication. Just be grateful for being together. It's It's such like a blessing to just be like, doing like learning how to live with other people like it's a crazy experience and it's not like anything I've ever done before but it's so unique and I don't know I feel like it's like gaining a family member a friend a supporter like it's it does everything I don't know it's yeah great. and Ross isn't it great for kids to have a care professional how was yes. it for you I think it's I thought I think it's interesting especially as my brother has special needs and I don't, I think that it was like really interesting because we kind of gained a bond that's so different from you and my brothers. I think that mm -hmm. that was, it was like, a, I thought it was a really fun experience and I thought that yeah. we did all these fun things. We were, I don't know. I think, I think it's a great thing. Yeah. Um, also, what we can add to this as information, your parents did a great job with, in my schedule, in my work schedule, your mom saved us, you and me, time together. Like we had every week, yeah. every Wednesday for at least one and a half hours, a girl's night. And this was when your brother went to bed already. Yeah. And I, we had time together, like just you and me. So I had time with your brother. Yeah, just one by one and time with you one by one. And exactly. this was a big key to build up a relationship between us. Yeah. I miss these times. I, know. I miss watching movies with you. I miss cooking. I miss baking. I miss ASMRs. I miss podcasting with you. I miss reading I books and I miss all this fun stuff and make up with you. It's like a whole I miss other lifetime. Traveling ago. and exploring and go for hikes. Also, if Kochi hates me for that one yeah it was so fun and good <laughs> and I know, it was a great time hopefully we see you over winter vacation yes okay thanks for listening to the podcast if this was helpful for you let us know give us a nice five star review and be here each other in a couple of weeks happy thanksgiving everyone happy thanksgiving Bye.